Welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi, the platform that offers real conversations with leaders and, and practitioners in the development field. This time, we have been hosted at Alwazi Place in Kirawa Road, uh, which is in Kitusuru, for all your accommodation needs, for your meetings, uh, the, the, the infrastructure here is and, and amenities here are super amazing. We'll walk you through the lunch, the food uh, across the day as you are having this meeting. And this time around, our guest is a force of nature. We are really, really glad to be having the Executive Director of Transparency International, Sheila Masinde. She, I've, I've known her for many years. Her and I are privileged to be sitting on the board of I Choose Life Africa. So not only are we both former employees there at different times, we are also both former employees of a Nation Media Group at different times mm -hmm. as well. But also, uh, Sheila went on ahead uh, and worked at the British, at the BBC uh, International Development Charity, uh, the, the BBC Media Action Group, where she was leading communication and, and uh, strategy there for a number of years before joining TI, the Transparency International Kenya. Her story is one that has uh, very interesting twins, twists and turns, which we learn about. Um, we will want to focus especially on her development journey. We will also want to focus on her life story. And we uh, are turning it over to hear uh, a lot about uh, Sheila. She's worked in media. She's worked in, in, in the corporate sector. She's worked in development sector. And now, obviously, leading one of the uh, governance uh, structures and governance bodies in the country, Transparency International. Mm -hmm. Sheila Masinde, welcome to Development thank Dynamics. You. And thank you. thank you for saying yes. And thank you for, you know, just being here on, on, on a lovely day like today. Yes. And, you know, typically you'd be the one on this side uh, wearing your former hat. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I've never really reconciled myself with that, that I'm now the one answering questions instead of asking the yeah. questions. <laughs> but I'm slowly getting the hang of it. Welcome here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, happy 2022. Happy 2022. It's probably too. half uh, too late to say that, uh, yeah. given the time of the year we are mm. in right now. And uh, happy to see you. Yeah. And um, I'd like to start with um, just an acknowledgement of your roots, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, where mm -hmm. you are from and who is, when, 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 when you dig a Sheila, where does Sheila come from? Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Maxi, again for enabling me to share my story on this very wonderful platform. For me, I grew up in Nairobi, oh. Kanairo, Mstana wa Kanairo, <laughs> it's called Kanairo nowadays. Eh? Yes. Yes, I, I was born, Yeah. Uh, I'm still shy about saying my age, <laughs> but uh, about 41, year, 41 years ago. Fantastic. In Nairobi, oh, nice. the, my umbilical cord, I'm told, is buried at the Aga Khan. Uh, uh, the Hospital. Yes, in Nairobi. Oh, fantastic. Uh, first, f about seven years of my life yeah. was spent in Gong. My parents lived there. Uh -huh. As soon as I got married, yeah. we, there was a thing about, you know how in Nairobi you you start life at Lafum Naitana. You call it, you, 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 you Naitana, we say yes. Naitana. Yeah, yeah. So there's a whole community of people from from, Gong. from, from their home, yeah. from where they, they came from. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Who, who they would all start off in, in Gong. Oh, so we have right. a lot of family friends who we all lived there yeah. at one point, especially those in the in the early in the early eighties. Yeah. So my life started there. Mm -hmm. I ha I was a, I'm the second born mm -hmm. in a in a family of four kids. Mm -hmm. And so only uh, girl or there's a mix. Oh, how did you think I'm, I'm the only girl? Yes, I'm the only girl. All oh, right, all right. <laughs> so the only girl in a in a in a family of three boys okay sandwiched uh, somewhere in between i'm the second born yeah uh -huh. yes i'm the second born yeah so very very can i say almost privileged yeah because i i didn't have to share so many things <laughs> like i got my own stuff you know they yeah. don't no hand me downs no things like that yeah the boys had to go through that right i didn't i think that was a privilege of being the, yeah. the only girl of course there are also demerits of being the the, the only girl yeah that you, you get to do so much yeah but i think i learned from all that yeah um 
so yeah, my, my early schooling was in Gong, yeah. a school called Gong Hills Academy. That's right. where I did my pre-primary education. Right, right, It was right, right next door. Yeah. Until uh, 1987, yeah. we moved to Langata. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we stayed in Langata. Actually, my mother just moved out of that house like two months ago. Oh, yeah. To now relocate home after retiring. Yeah. So I'm very much a child of the of the city. Yeah. And uh, at that point, I started my my primary schooling in Loreto Convent Valley Road. Okay, before be, before you even moved to Loreto. Yeah. So in this period of your very, very early childhood, yeah. uh, so both sets of the parents are there, uh, your your siblings are there, you are this, um, you're, you're speaking about how yeah. you're not, you know, you're not sharing stuff. Uh, <laughs> how, how, how about your extended family? Are yeah. they, do they visit often? Do you yes, yes, to... yes, yes, yes. We, I mean, you know, in those days, uh, the, mm. uh, you, the, the, the extended family was very, very, very strong. Involved, yeah. 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 I, I only learned that there's a nuclear family and the, the, an extended family. I think when we were in class four and we learned about it in home yeah. science, yeah, that's yeah, when yeah. you learn, oh, there's a nuclear family and it's father, mother, children. Yeah. And then extended family is, is anyone that, else. Yeah. 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 But for us, because we grew up with yeah. my uncles, with my aunties. Right my cousin everyone yeah. and and especially you know how it was those days mm -hmm. there's only what, maybe one or two family members in nairobi right so anyone else who's coming from up country yeah <laughs> there's only one place where they go so a lot of my a lot of my family my Would uncles and my aunties because place. my father and my mother were both firstborns in yes. their homes and they were bringing up also their their younger siblings, siblings yes. so we got the opportunity to mm. grow up with a lot of my uncles and aunties them. who are actually many of some of them are my age about oh, right. my age we're about age mates okay and it was good because for some of my especially my uncles mm. were very i can say academic mm. and they went to very all these nice national schools alliance yeah. mango yeah and i think interacting with them at a very early age it yeah. made me so focused right uh, some of them went to do medicine and, yeah. and 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 so on so i i really was motivated and inspired by them yeah and for us at that point because we were growing and interacting with them at that early age we mm. knew that we had no choice but to succeed in life yeah just as they had because yeah. we had an even more privileged right. life so extended yeah. family for us was yeah. and still is a, a very big part of That's us very nice yeah. very nice okay good, good so let's continue so you um your primary school life so yeah. you're, you're you're from gong uh gong hills you said gong yes hills. so i went to gong hills for my pre-primary education Ed education right uh but from the word go my, my 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 parents particularly my mother did not want me to go to a co-educational facility mm -hmm. She she had this thing about an old girls school mm. Catholic who were Catholic mm -hmm. and we were very we were very strong staunch, staunch Catholic family yeah. yeah and so my parents were very keen for me to get an education in a Catholic uh, institution. institution right and so some of their friends had their daughters at Loreto Convent Valley Road yeah and I mean it's an it's an it's a, it's a reputable school yeah, and had very, been there for very, years very, now yeah. it's turning eighty this year yeah so of course they they I was enrolled yeah. there from class one yeah and yeah very very catholic and i think that really enhanced my spiritual life my pastoral yeah um education i received all my sacraments oh, well, wow. at least the, the the first you know the the the, the, the initial sacraments yeah uh, first holy communion yeah. and then later on confirmation yeah and i think that's what my parents really wanted because mm. they wanted me to just to model mm. my life in a very uh, particular yeah way. in a particular yeah. way in terms yeah. of christian upbringing mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so i think that that was really their intention and mm. i i hope they're not disappointed <laughs> yeah yeah so um the 87 is when you went to so i joined loreto in 1987 for right. my for my class one mm -hmm. and i went on up to 1994 when i sat oh, so for my same school. class eight exams yeah same yeah. school i yeah. am a very can i say what very um you uh, very hard to to leave yeah. institutions yeah, yeah. <laughs> i start somewhere and i stick until yeah. until i feel like yes this is yeah. the end of it so yeah so i i i've i've, 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 I've from class one to eight same school from one to four, four same school oh wow undergraduate postgraduate yeah, same, yeah. Same thing like what that. are what are your other fond memories of loretta convent wow with loretta convent when i especially when i think about the cbc uh system as they are trying to model it right now yeah i i actually think back that the, the cbc started for us mm -hmm. then in those uh, that was how many years ago is it now 35 True. years ago yeah. mm. uh because we we learned so many things that i'm seeing my son now struggling with yeah. in cbc yeah um the, it had a strong emphasis of course apart from the pastoral education mm -hmm. because it was a christian catholic institution run by the institute of blessed virgin mary sisters the yes. loretto sisters founded yeah. by mary ward yeah so apart from that strong christian you know 
uh, upbringing and we had to have mass we used to have mass every every friday yeah i think to start with when when oh, the lower wow. classes and then later on every thursday mm. and before mass the day before you have to go for confession mm. Mm. <laughs> and confess all your sins that yeah. you have done and yeah. that was really critical for me because yeah. it used to be so embarrassing every week you go to the priest and then you say oh and i stole a rubber yeah i did this i lied yeah. so at some point you actually now say now this week i don't want to have any sins to confess yeah, exactly. <laughs> so and i look back at you know in terms of when you talk about integrity and mm. they say you know integrity is what you do what you are when no one is looking mm. i think for me it started then mm. because i'd always feel so embarrassed to have to go for confession mm. and then say that i've pinched these i've stolen these mm. i've lied to my mother mm. and so you you started learning how to just model your life in the in the right way mm -hmm. you know and and just be uh you know follow the, the, the do, do the right thing exactly. always even when no one is looking because we yeah. had to do those confessions every 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 wednesday oh, wow. before mass Jesus so that's Christ. what i remember most about it yeah but just back to the practical experiential learning mm -hmm. uh loretto convent valley road is very strong at that. that yeah so from an early stage we would do a lot of there's a lot of music mm -hmm. we actually used to have lessons like two lessons a week mm. on singing mm. like in our timetable there's a lesson called singing singing yes you just Not go to a room and sing it's singing <laughs> Singing. Right. We had uh, 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 two lessons for singing yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, sec what we call secular songs. Oh, oh wow. And then we had one where we just do, it was just, and the lesson was called hymns. Oh. Where we would go practice now the hymns for the mass that week. What's your favorite uh, secular song from back then? And oh, those are, it's all those kids' songs. songs. Those kids' songs. Yeah. Um, if, I, if I remember well, there was, of course, those was head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Ah, all right. <laughs> and all there right. were many versions of yeah, it. Yeah. Because we were taught so many versions of yeah. it. So I always remember it so fondly yeah, because yeah. of how we'd have mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, demonstrate, I mean, can I, can I say the movements yeah. around it? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, the hymns, hymns were so many of them. Yeah. Because uh, every, every single every single part of mass mm. had to be a hymn and a mm. dance right um and then other things around just creativity i think for me i'm a very creative person mm -hmm. and of course i love music because mm -hmm. of i mean i think in my next life i'll probably be a singer <laughs> <laughs> so if i come back to dnd yeah. to dd with maxi probably you'll be interviewing me maybe as a singer <laughs> as because a singer. I, I i loved music from right. that time because right. of all the emphasis on music mm. we do piano lessons mm. those mm. ballet mm. um uh, but th also there was a lot of art emphasis on art and mm, craft as mm, well mm. so i i remember learning how to do those things that i see kids struggling with now the mm. paper mache the uh, mosaics yeah the montage collage all uh, those things we did them right, at very early right. in, in life yeah painting drawing yeah, all yeah. those things well, Meeting then that as an well. amazing time though you know that allowed for a lot of expression yes and we inculcated in the curriculum you know because yeah it was you know these were examinable subjects yes it was examinable but for 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 loretta convent valley road mm -hmm. it's not just about following what was in the then 844 curriculum it, yeah it was just going the extra mile especially in the formative years mm -hmm. Uh, to to just enable girls to be very creative mm -hmm. and expressive, mm. so that's why the the the, the subjects of music, mm. uh, those opportunities were were very much emphasized, and not just music but also art and craft. Mm. You know, the the knitting. Mm. I learned how to knit when I was in, when I was nine years mm. old. Crocheting, mm. you know, sewing. We'd make dolls and mm. all those things. And none of my my my, my brothers were in a public school, mm. and I, they they never got that experience mm. when we were learning at the same time. Mm. So I realized it was something that just Loretta Conway Valley Road had made mm. an, an, a deliberate effort uh, towards, effort towards mm -hmm. you know, a, you know, making, ensuring that we are learning, you know, practical R skills. Right. No, it's not just about books. Mm. I think one one thing for me that was really stood out as well was um, because I, I really developed an interest in writing. Mm -hmm. And we started then. Um, we, we had a lesson just on story writing. Mm. You know, every week you had to write, do us, we had a whole hour just to write stories mm -hmm. and that's when my interest really picked because and the teacher would tell me Sheila you're really good with writing mm. and you know come and read your I want you to read the story for the class mm. and that really is what encouraged me towards writing and right. communication when I when I think about it right so I, I really relish you know those early memories mm. and the things I was able to do early mm. on because mm. when I look think about my creative side it mm. really emanated from there. from there and then of course now when you get to class five is when now you realize okay you know you're gonna sit exams in yeah. four years yeah. Soon <laughs> you're going to sit for the Kenya certificate of primary education so yeah. now you have to read yeah so now that's when we became a bit more serious, serious now you start now going, yeah now yeah. the maths and of course we're learning then but it was not as yeah. regimented yeah you know now it was now pre about preparing you for the exams which i you know when you think about what's yeah cbc and 
you know the previous system yes you're like okay i think there are strengths in each yeah but i wish there could be a, a, a good balance between that experiential and practical learning yeah you know with the book with yes. the book learning yes and then so from class five all of a sudden I was, i'd been this creative person yeah. then i became a book person yeah. i mean i was very good with my academics yes i was very good yeah. um at some point even topping my class yeah so yeah, I was a serious child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. a very serious. Most people who knew me from then, especially yeah. from the time I was about 10, 11 to class eight, yeah. always say, Sheila, you are a very serious girl. <laughs> I was very serious about la books, books and learning. reading and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And so, how did you perform, and what what were your choices for school? Yeah, high well, school I performed time. considerably well. Mm -hmm. Um, in those days, the mm. school that used to trend was Precious Blood Riruta, mm -hmm. and so we're all in love with this green uniform yeah. and, and the white. What was, what was the nickname given to? PB. PB it was right. called PB, yes. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think it's still called PB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, from the time I was in class 7, mm -hmm. I was working towards Going to PB. Hey, me, I was just PB, PB. Yeah. At some point, I got confused. Kenya High also had this, mm. you know, sounded also very attractive mm -hmm. and, you know, it was also doing very mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. and topping topping the KCSE, mm -hmm. uh, you know, exams. Mm -hmm. So I thought of also Kenya High, but at the end, because of my, the Catholic, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted also to just continue oh, with the Catholic in a, in a Catholic school and also I my see. parents were quite keen on it. Yeah. So my, my choices were Kenya High yeah. and, and of course PB. Yeah. Uh, those days we'd choose one national school yeah. and then you choose two, like for our schools, we'd had to choose two provincial boarding schools yeah. and two provincial day schools. Yeah. So for, for provincial, uh, I chose PB and my girls school Nairobi. I also liked my girls school Nairobi, yeah. Cubs. Mm -hmm. Not because of academics. Now this is a bit. Uh, can I say? I don't know how to call it. Yeah. But I like their uniform. They had this really <laughs> nice navy blue blazer and this nice blue uniform. I love. I love blue. Eh? Yeah. So, Evidently. <laughs> um, yeah, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so for, for my girls, I didn't like it because of the academics. I just loved their uniform. Mm. And they're also good with the arts. They were good with the music and mm. things. So I was mm. like, okay, mm. maybe if I mm. don't do so well in the books, I yeah. can still go we, back to we'll music. We'll be meeting at like national that. music festivals. Yeah. yeah. So I prepared for my class eight. Mm -hmm. I, I I really, you know, prepared and I was working towards PB. But then I missed it by, I think, four points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I missed it by, by four marks. Mm -hmm. And I was called instead to my girls' school, Nairobi. Right. But I, yeah, Cubs. I took it in stride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I went to Cubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah.